listening to the Medic Materials Podcast, hosted by Mike Turek, Emily Yates, Kelsey Coons, and Gerard Cuomo. All our current EMS providers and educators with a combined 30 years experience. Each month, we discuss EMS news, medical science, and review actual EMS calls, bringing many educational opportunities to the listener. Portions of the calls have been altered to protect the privacy and identity of all involved. Hello and welcome everyone back to the Medic Materials Podcast. You know, Emily, I thought of something as I was listening to that intro. Me too. What do you think about? That I can never do that because I can't say that word. And then, and then, and then, and then, I can't do it. I mean, An- dro- anonymity? Anonymity? Anonymity. Anonymity. <laughs> anonymity. Yep, that one. Um, no, I thought of something different. And uh, I was thinking, he goes, we talk about, you know, call reviews, discussions, medical science, and EMS news. And not once have we ever <laughs> talked about EMS news. That's not true. We not, talked about COVID. No, we didn't. No, we never talk about COVID. I don't ever talk about COVID for a that's, reason. That's, that's the third rail. No, COVID came up in one of the episodes. When? Because we were talking about how it's like changed how we have to practice. Oh, maybe. But that doesn't really, yeah, that doesn't constitute news. Like, you know. All right. I'll, I know we will work we, on that for the next. I podcast. know we did talk. We did talk oh, about uh, our in our ketamine episode. We did talk oh, about yes, ketamine yes, news. Yep. So you know, I guess that's our one. That there's our there's our there you go. One time, one time. You only get news once, once. a year, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll that's what I was thinking about. Time. We'll put it into the rig check. There you go. You should. Um, so with with talking about rig check, Kelsey's not here, so we brought in Bitch. Ariel and Greg again. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Um, and uh, with with not having a rig check, I did want to um, you know just share some information, and I just wanted to say thank Wait, you guys. Would this be considered? This would be considered EMS news, right? Uh, new. Oh, okay. No, no, this is podcast news. Uh, no, oh, okay. Not really of the EMS nature. Um, but, uh, you know. Well, I, technically. I mean, it is an EMS show, so you could, you know, cross some bridges, dot some I's, and make some lines. Throw me a fucking phone, huh? <laughs> Come on. We've got a badass over here. Um, so, the, uh, the, the show is, you know, again, becoming a a very big uh success words. in what words words i know i didn't want to you know it's hard to think about what you want to say when you're trying to read what you wrote and you don't like what you wrote all right just shut up don't for a look <laughs> remember podcast girl um but uh but yeah so i again i know i say this a lot um but it is truly humbling the success of this show uh, we have now surpassed the 10,000 download mark. We're now nearing the uh, 11,000 download mark. Uh, with this episode, we'll clearly go by that. We're now um, four, three or four episodes away from our 50th episode mark. Wow. God, which is, damn. yeah, damn. which is just unbelievably crazy. Um, you know, I'm seeing more and more people active on social media in sharing the show and talking about it. And I know a lot of people listen to it in like listen parties and stuff like that in hospitals. And it literally is just, it's unbelievable to me the amount of success that this rambling, (laughs) stupid, entertaining EMS show has gotten because it is so different from everything else. So I just want to say an awesome thank you to everyone who is, you know, on this journey. Thank you to you guys who spend time out of your day to come here and you know talk about nothing with with me and gerard um it is uh like i said it's a it's a very humbling experience to deal with this show on a daily basis so um before the call review i do have uh one actually two announcements to make uh the first announcement is part of my rig check since we have to do it uh is we have to welcome a new patreon john uh, thank right. you for uh, hey. for subscribing and becoming a Patreon. Um, I actually was in contact with him. He he caught up on all of the uh, new episodes, or, or you know all of the Patreon episodes, and we had a long discussion. 
they he said they are absolutely phenomenal. Um, so it, yeah, so we're we're getting you know new Patreons uh, here and there. Every you know, I am never going to make people give us money, <laughs> but uh, the fact that people are willing to, especially in this economic time, is again crazy. So thank you guys for that. Uh, the next thing is I I composed a new piece of music just for this episode. So do you guys want to hear it? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Here now, we go. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Would this I? be considered EMS news? Um, possibly. Give, give it up, Gerard. He just wants He just wants news, right? <laughs> Lord. Words matter to Gerard. If he's saying them every <laughs> week, they need to be there. But I did compose a new piece of music, so I want you guys, I want to share it with the world. Okay? So are you guys ready? Do it. Okay. I felt like the angel going over the patient. Now I feel like they're just standing there over. Right. <laughs> so, so. It was very Disney esque. <laughs> Disney esque? Yeah. I, I mean, I'll go with Disney esque. I liked it. So, so I just, uh, you know, I wanted to bring you guys on, especially because. And, and compose this, you know, new piece of music just for you guys in the fact to say congratulations for your engagement. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Um, I had to let the cat out of the bag to Gerard since he doesn't have social media and didn't know. <laughs> no, he didn't. No. But, uh, and I'm sure everyone forgot about lonely old Gerard and didn't tell him. Yeah. But, of uh, not. you know, it, uh, I felt like you guys are, you know, significant parts of the show and significant parts of all of our lives. So congratulations. We are super happy for you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like that was an epic announcement. Needed epic oh, music. That's awesome. Thank uh, you so much. Good. I like it. <laughs> it was really good. Had I not known what that was leading up to, <laughs> I sure would have been like, yo, this better be fucking like really big or you don't shut yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> It was. Know, don't G worry. Had, G had no idea. Yeah. Yep. Yep. She and, and that was about halfway through. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> well, you know, and, and it could have been the lead up to. All right, guys, we're done. That's this is the final yeah. episode. Yes, fuck is. off. Um, I was kind of hoping it was like the Stone Cold Steve Austin Broken Skull IPA was finally going to sponsor <laughs> oh, the show. Oh, dude! No, 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 no! It will. That will. I will find <laughs> the most epic music for that ever. Ever made that will be like, you know, I forget their engagement. Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> <laughs> you know, get them on the line. <laughs> That's right. right, we're trying. All right, that, that, is, that is one of the things that we are trying on this show. Uh, I think everyone should so, create a hashtag so yeah. that they reach out to us right? and go, Yo, sponsor these bitches. <laughs> Stone Cold Medic Materials, hashtag. That's yep, it. there you go. Uh, but again, thank you but guys the, for being here. Awesome. Um, so for Gerard. And I, was gonna, I was going to say that I was, one of the reasons I was really trying to be there today was because I wanted to be there to wish you guys congratulations and let you know how happy I am and actually be there in person. So. Thanks, Brad. Thank we you. miss you. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. So for and Gerard. Because I'm not there, you can thank my fucking County goddamn road workers for it. I'm already writing a letter. I was about to say that. I'm going to write a letter. <laughs> for schnizzle. So, well, uh, for Gerard, since he didn't get to actually see uh, anything, how exactly did you do it? 
Greg. <laughs> because so. because we all got to watch it. Gerard has no idea. Yeah. I mean, it so. could have been behind the dumpster for all we know. I was planning it for a while. Uh, we were gonna go. We were gonna go on an international vacation, but we decided to go to Key West. Uh, so it was more of a spur of the moment. Uh, so I had a plan pretty quickly for my initial plans, um, but I figured out that they had sunset cruises down there. Uh, so we went they down do. and we took a sunset cruise. Uh, we went to the top, and there's probably like ten other people up there. Um, I kind of timed it out to where the guy would finish his drink um, for another party that was close to us, and once he finished his drink and went down. I went down there to talk to him to say, hey, I plan on proposing at 8 o'clock. Um, I don't need you guys to, like, leave, but is there any way we can get a good video, you know, just yeah. separate? And the guy was all for it. Um, he ultimately ended up talking to everybody else that was on top because there was other people. And right at 8 o'clock, uh, everybody got up, moved to the side, and I was afraid That's that. awkward. Yeah, it was. Did you right notice her. that? Oh, I'm just like, oh, look at yeah. they're all getting pictures together. <laughs> so, they're so cute. So at eight, <laughs> 8 o'clock's rolling around, and we were, where we were, the sunset was the opposite way. So I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to get the picture I wanted. So I talked to the crewmate, which who talked to the captain, and all of a sudden the captain cranks the boat around, <laughs> like, nice. quick. Yeah, and he gets us in the perfect picture, and we had the perfect opportunity to do it. And it, it came out really well. That is so awesome. Did yeah. you know? No. Cool. No, she had no idea. I had no idea. She had so no idea. thank God. So cool. funny story, Jess knew – just didn't know when it was going to happen. So I went old school. We were leaving for Disney. I was going to do it while we were at Disney. And um, I went old school, asked Mark the night before we were leaving. And he's like, yep, sure. Awesome. Love to have you. And <laughs> goes and tells his wife, who then calls <laughs> Jess and says, hey, Mike's going to propose sometime oh, at what? Disney. God. Are you kidding? That's yeah. Terrible. So she knew that it was happening. Terrible. And just didn't know when. That sucks. And I was like, and then I found that out, and I was like, fuck off. Yeah, out of it. Like, damn you. Yeah. So it's a good thing so, that I actually so, did so it. First, <laughs> yeah, right? Can you imagine if you did right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, so I, first thing, uh, thank you for having it in my backyard. Well, my old former backyard. <laughs> uh, I, I miss being able to go to the Keys on a, on a whim. But anyway. And second thing, I'm totally shocked that, Foster's first words after you saying, hey, I want to marry your daughter, wasn't, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, no, that is so true. So, so true. Um, so we are going back in this call review to my favorite area to review calls in. Can anyone guess what it is? Gilboa. Rusticville. <laughs> exactly. We are going all the way back to Rustic. So <clears throat> this call takes place in a very rural private ambulance district. Uh, each ambulance is staffed with the standard configuration, one EMT basic, one paramagician. Uh, this district is unique in the fact that the EMTs... EMT badass. You know, I gave you your own soundbite, and now I can't get to it on a fucking... So it's going to sound you stupid. You got a badass over there here. There you go. EMT badass. EMT badass. You can't have paramagicians and EMTB. I mean, you can. No. Y you can. No. <laughs> um... So this district is kind of unique in the fashion that the EMTs are volunteer and the medics are paid, okay? So there are four hospitals in the surrounding area. There's a uh, cardiac hospital approximately 45 minutes away from the scene. There is a veterans hospital a, and a trauma center that also has a stroke and medical wing uh, all about 60 minutes from the scene, okay? Um so are those two different facilities? There's a VA and so, Yep, so there's there's the VA. Or the VA is the medical. Nope, there's okay. the VA and then the trauma center and then there's a stroke and medical center. Got it. So there's four different hospitals all kind of doing their own thing. You only mentioned three. I'm sorry. The cardiac hospital 45 minutes away, Veterans Hospital, trauma center and Stroke Medical oh. Center are all 60 oh, okay. minutes away. Oh, okay. okay. Okay? Gotcha. So pretty much anything you want is within 45 to 60 minutes. Okay. Okay? Um, now, I'm going to uh, start this story off with the medic in this tale is completely brand new. Okay? Like under a month experience on their own with their flashy new card. Okay, now their EMT does have a few years experience, but that's 
volunteer experience. So who knows if they're doing, I mean, it's Rusticville, so they could be doing eight calls a year, one call a month, 57 calls a year. We don't know. So what their experience is could vary. So you guys are dispatched a priority four or an alpha priority to a private residence for a 70-year-old male not acting right per family. So is there... Gerard, it's time. (laughs) (laughs) This is for you. Right. So uh, Gerard, here you go. Here's your question. Is there something that you're going to be thinking about more so than anything else specifically with this dispatch information? Don't let me down. Yeah, it's probably going to be a cardiac arrest. Probably, right? You get there and they're dead. It's an alpha. It's an alpha. It's an alpha. I mean, the man's yeah. not wrong. The man is not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that or it could be UPI. Thank you. you. Know? That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> 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 I mean, again, he's not wrong, right? Seven-year-old, <laughs> not acting right, UTI, right? Yeah, UTI. Um, but there, there is a lot of different things that, you know, go through my head going into this, you know, was there trauma? Is it strokey? Is it UTI? Is there an infection? Like all of these different things. Is it sugar? Like there's a lot of things to be considering, especially with like an alpha not feeling right. Mm -hmm. They could just be weak and they're completely normal, but they don't feel right. You know? Um, Has he gotten into the gym bean? Yeah. Right. (laughs) Did he, You know, smoke his stash of weed, and that's the first time in 20 years. Who knows? I was going to say, if he's 70 years old and he's smoking, hey, God bless you. God bless you. Um, So the crew arrives on scene approximately 14 to 20 minutes, like 15, 20 minutes after the dispatch. Uh, They grab their first in bag, their cardiac monitor, and they walk up to the home. Uh, At the front door, they're met by a middle-aged male, and uh, they tell them, that they came over to check on their dad, and then when they arrived, he wouldn't communicate with them. Uh, he felt very weird about, you know, how his dad was acting, became concerned, and then dialed 911. He then leads the crew into the living room where they see an elderly male sitting in a reclining chair. So going in, meeting this guy, limited story, information so far, does anything change in your thought process? Anything like bounce out or are we still it could be a plethora of things yeah I we don't know yet start eliminating AEIO tips yeah right we're we're thinking it could be anything at this point so the paramedic moves to the man's side and finds that he has his eyes open but they are just staring out straight ahead into nowhere space he's blinking every so often on his own but he does not answer when the paramedic introduces himself Or when the EMT, like, introduces themselves, gives the guy a gentle shake, no response to either. The paramedic performs a pretty rigorous sternal rub. Again, no response from this guy. Just completely stares straight through the paramedic. Airway does appear open, patent, clear of any debris and fluid. Breathing appears slightly tachypnic. No lung sounds are taken at this point. Peripheral pulses um, are present, but feel irregular. The, uh, the medic attempts to ask the guy his name, like, where are you, who the you know, current president is, all of those orientation questions, and receives absolutely no response from this guy, again, other than just staring a hole straight through them. Skin's intact, it's dry, and appears to be a shade of, like, pale, now, granted, this house has some pretty fair, like, bad lighting. So is that pale because of the bad lighting, or is he pale because he's actually pale? So your guys' thoughts on this initial presentation? I see a lot of wheels turning around this thing, so we'll go to Gerard. This, this might be a UTI. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pulse is irregular, so we could be having a cardiac issue on top of the pale skin. So I definitely want to get a 4-lead, 12-lead blood sugar pretty quickly. Yep. I agree with all that. Anything else? Anyone, anyone check for a wet bandage? <laughs> or a wet diaper? Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry, Ariel. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was being 12 years old. Sorry. Go ahead. Can he obey commands? No. So he can't obey commands. So you're Cincinnati. Like if you try to do a Cincinnati, it's going to be non-conclusive. 
I just, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've go a little bit more down, like, the stroke route a little bit right now. And if his mm. pulse is irregular, does he have AFib? Because that could make a difference. If right. Is that an irregularity AFib normal? Yeah. Right. He right. could have been thrown into been AFib thrown now. He's in the stroke. Yep. How about your thoughts, Em? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. What bandage it is? Mm-hmm. So yep. <laughs> it could still literally be anything. Could, like yeah. I want vitals. I want a blood sugar. I, you know, there's so much more I want. Just, I don't want to limit myself. Kind of based on how he's looking, his, you know, what we palpated so far. I don't like it. Uh, yeah. Right. I don't like it. It's it, he's definitely not normal. Right. At that I point. don't like it, but I'm not. Nothing gonna... about this seems okay. Right. And he's just staring. Just staring straight off into the sunset. <laughs> Eyes blink here and there. He was just trying to see their engagement. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so the, uh, the EMT goes over to the son and begins to ask him for, like, any more information on, on this guy. Uh, he tells the EMT that his dad has um, end-stage renal disease and is on dialysis. The EMT... My favorite. Right? <laughs> So the EMT uh, asks if he, like, went to his dialysis appointments this week, and he said that his dad never misses his appointments, goes Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Now, for reference, it's now Sunday, okay? Um, He's also reported that his dad has a diabetic history but does not specifically know, like, which medications he's taking, only that he gives um, himself insulin shots through the stomach. Also reported that he is not allergic to any drugs that the son is aware of. So while the EMT is, you know, off gathering all of this medical history, the medic begins to gather baseline vitals. Uh, Vital signs via the NIVP cuff. Blood pressure is 71 over 41. I'm going to include MAP for reference, MAP of 51. Uh, Heart rate of 137 and irregular. SpO2 is 90% on room air. And his respiratory rate is 22 with slightly shallow ventilations. The, uh, The medic goes... And places him on the four lead. Initial rhythm shows a sinus tack with numerous multifocal PVCs. No 12 lead is obtained at this point in time. So, EMT now comes back from gathering all the information and discusses their findings with the paramagician. The medic uh, then obstructs, obstructs, instructs, I think myself on that one, uh, instructs the EMT to obstain a blood glucose. Uh, or he obstructs that, him. I mean, yeah, <laughs> get out of my way. Um, <laughs> you don't know what you're fucking doing. Go away. Um, and uh, so he instructs them now that they know that he's a diabetic to take a blood glucose. Wait, they wouldn't have done that if he wasn't a diabetic? No. Nah. Probably not. Okay. Um, nah. I mean, in this show, no, definitely nah. not. <laughs> uh, so blood glucose is obtained and returns as 190 milligrams per deciliter. So... Presentation, vital signs, story, where are you guys going? Are you leaning now any more in one direction or another? I mean, it's it's Sunday. Last dialysis was Friday, so we're two if days went. in. If he went. Um, I, I would like to get a 12 lead, look at the QRS complexes, T waves. Yeah. Yep. I'm kind of liking this whole stroke thing. I think that's where I'm. I'm, I want the 12 lead first before I kind of go any further. Yeah, and I think again, like Gerard just said, he kind of likes the stroke thing. You can't rule that out either. No. You know, it could most definitely be. We don't know when this guy was last seen. Well, you know, what is his access for dialysis? Does he have a port or is it a fistula? We'll get there. Um, I just we're 45 to an hour away from any hospital, so I think I wouldn't stay on scene. I think I would start moving a little bit. Yeah, at this point, I mean, really, what are you doing other than assessment on scene? I think the only thing I would stay and do is try to get an IV first before we start moving them at a blood pressure 70s, but then any other treatments, let's get them out, get them going. Yeah. You're you're welcome, Greg. Thank you, G. (laughs) (laughs) That that, that is exactly where I learned that from. Stay on scene. Yep. Thank you, G. Yep. Um... (laughs) So you need to come back. <laughs> I, I'm working hard, man. I'm you trying. Don't, don't work too hard, though. So uh, the EMT goes outside, grabs a stair chair to begin extrication out of this house. Meanwhile, the medic takes a uh, second to kind of like consult their protocols. Now, remember, this Which is ones? a well, I, I even got that. So let me look at all of them. Let's look at fits so many still. OK, but 
I mean, maybe this paramedic is going to work out of five or six different protocols. Who knows, right? Uh, but specifically in their area, they do have a hypertension or I'm sorry, hypotension protocol. So that's where they looked first because, you know, map of 51, 79 over 40 something. They were like, hey, they're hypotensive. Fluids Let's go and here. Pressers. Is Fluids and pressers. Fluids and pressers. Or they say neurons before nephrons. I mean, kind of, you know, there's not much else that we're going to do for hypotension. Right. But we have to think dialysis patient. This is also, yes, a dialysis patient, but a brand new paramedic, too. Yeah. Right. Well, see now, see now, if this was 911, I would rip some rubber hose, hosing out of one of the vehicles <laughs> in the yard and then I would go ahead and, you know, Siphon. get access to myself and then put the other end in him and start a freaking transfusion right there. I Absolutely, mean, come on. 100 percent. Yeah, you know, it's what we do in the field. It's funny. You actually bring up 911. Uh, <laughs> it was funny. I went to a call yesterday where my where the EMTs brought in the stair chair to extricate this patient out of the house, and this patient literally looked at it and was like, "Oh, I've seen what those do before," and I was like, "Oh yeah, you've been taken? No, nope, nope, never been taken out on one, but I saw it on one of my shows." And I was like, "Oh no!" It's like fuck. They probably like put a rocket booster on it and all this other bullshit. Like, like, oh, I would have had so go. much fun with that. <laughs> Oh, I know what that is. I've seen that before. Oh, so you've been to the proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, these things do happen. Uh, so they're, uh, they're able to move him to the stair chair. And uh, he continued to just stare off into space, not speaking to EMS, not making any noises while they, like, schluck him from one chair to the other. They move him out of the house, into the ambulance, onto the stretcher, and again, did they keep did they keep him sitting up or did they lay him down or nope? So they kept him sitting up again because Good. of the stair chair, and then they did the head elevated. You know during uh, uh thank you, you Jesus know, during the during the you know positioning on the stretcher, mm -hmm. um, and uh, again no response to EMS while he's getting schlucked around. What was his last normal? Did the sun say? The sun did not say. So. The son goes and says, like, hey, can you guys transport him to the vet's hospital? Because he's a veteran, 60 minutes away. And no. they're like, sure, whatever. So are you guys good with that decision, or are you personally trying to talk him out of the vet hospital? I would try to talk him out of the vet hospital because we don't have a clear, definite what's going on right now. So we don't know if he's stroking, if it's something, if it's something simple. Um, so I, I would try to go beyond VA. How far away is our next hospital though? Cause you said they're pretty. So yeah. 45 and 60 like, minutes. 40, 40, 45 minutes to the stroke center. Uh, another, 60 minutes to the stroke center. Another 15. Okay. 45 to the cardiac. Yeah. Okay. So your time differential is nothing. Your veterans hospital is 60 minutes away as well as your trauma and your stroke center are 60 minutes away. They're probably contained in the same city. So it's, yeah, it's I'd probably really, try to explain to him that, yeah, I mean, the more appropriate place for them to go right now would be the, you know, the full enchilada. Yeah, yeah. the bigger, better hospital. If you go to the VA, they don't have stroke now. You're just another hour, two hours. Oh, right, because right. they're going to end minutes. up at the stroke center anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. Or they could divert you if you call in your radio report and they're like, eh. Right. Hey, we don't want this here. Yeah. What? Well, hospitals right. don't do that. <laughs> What? I had a doctor say, oh, the, great, great, the, the, greatest, the greatest thing I ever heard on a radio was uh, a pork crew from one of the commercial agencies to, trying to take somebody to the VA that had a head injury. <laughs> and they made him repeat his report like three times. And now he's all flustered on a radio. Now he was now in his report, of course, he's giving, you know, like the, whole, the guy's whole freaking, you know, gambit of everything, you know, including his you know mother's maiden name, his dog's <laughs> name and all this shit. And, you know, GCS, he kept saying GCS of 15, GCS of 15. They finally had him give him the third time, and he misspoke and said GSW 15. Nice. <laughs> at, at which point, me and my partner looked at the one, God damn, they shot him 15 times. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> and then after all that, they turned around and said, yeah, we can accept him. Take him the other place. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. At that point, if I was at EMT, I would have been like, never mind. We're going somewhere else. Yeah. Right. I quit. 
But I do think it is a <laughs> legit concern in the fact that this guy probably should not be going to the VA hospital unless we know that the VA hospital is has certain Quite. capabilities. There are VA hospitals that are a little better equipped for certain things. There's specialty VA hospitals. Um, they are just few and far in between. You know, so again, it just depends on this VA hospital. Um, but not knowing that, I agree with all you guys. They probably should talk the guy into being like, hey, let's go somewhere more appropriate. Especially because they don't know what's going on that's, at this point. That's it. They don't have that's any it. idea they have yet. no idea. This guy is altered. Right. Period. Yeah. That's what you got. You're altered. I mean, I mean, after all this, did we even establish it? Uh, did anyone verify that maybe there was even trauma? No. Like, we don't even know, know if this sun, guy fell on whack his noggin. The son came home and found him like that. Yeah. Or came to right. check and, on him. And from all of the assessments that have been done so far, there is no trauma found that they've noted. Right. So. But we don't know. But we don't know. You know? Yeah. Um, so, the, uh, the crews decide, okay, they are willing to go to the VA hospital, and the EMT gets in the front and begins the hour drive to the hospital. Now, the medic, being in the back, they start their secondary assessment. And they find that he's still altered and unresponsive. Um, still not able to answer any type of orientation questions like his name, uh, where he is, president, month, time, anything like that. ABCs are still intact. Uh, they do expose most areas on the body and find no traumas noted to anywhere that they can find. Um, they do find on the left forearm a dialysis fistula. Uh, abdomen is round and firm, appearing very distended. Skin appears very pale, however dry. Uh, the medic goes and places him on oxygen via nasal cannula set at 2, uh, as his oxygen sats have still not increased from like 90 to 91 on, uh, on room air. So... They move forward. The medic then obtains IV access via the right arm and uh, places a, su um, a successful 18 gauge in the right AC. They hang a thousand ml bag in normal saline, but hold off on starting the infusion of the saline. Instead, they again look at their protocols and note that for severe hypotension, they're able to infuse norepi two to twenty mics per minute and then titrate to affect of uh, good blood pressures. However, they can only do this after two liters of normal saline. So they decide to uh, uh, like attempt to contact med control at the VA hospital they're transporting to. Mm -hmm. However, guys, mm -hmm. remember that we're in my favorite spot in Gilboa in Rusticville where there is mm -hmm. no cell service. Oops. And they're too mm -hmm. far away from the hospital to attempt to utilize radio to actually talk to anyone at the hospital. So knowing this, they go, okay, well, we're going to recycle vital signs and figure out where we are. BP is now 67 over 36, which is a... I think we're going to rename... The, uh, real quick, I think we're going to rename this the, this whole area. Uh, like we, you know, Kelsey gave us the Bermuda toilet. This is going to be the devil's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it fits. It fits. Yeah. Um, well, some things fit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, BP, new BP, is 67 over 36. That's a map of 46 decreased from 51. Uh, Ouch. Heart rate of 140, still sinus tack with multifocal PBCs. Respiratory rate but increased is, from where we started, right? Yep. Uh, increase of, I believe, 10 or 15 points. Yeah, it was 138. Okay. Uh, yeah, one, mm. Oh, no, 137 right. in a regular. So it That's right. it more or less jumped three. No, no okay. But it's still high. Still high. Yeah. Uh, heart rate of 140, still the sinus tack with multifocal PBCs. Respiratory rate is 24, and shallow SBO2 is 95% on the two liters. He still has his eyes open. They're still blinking periodically, but still offers completely no responses to any stimuli to EMS. So now if you guys are in this medic spot, right, you can't get med control. You can't get med control via cell phone or radio. Uh, you've looked at your protocols. 
you see this type of patient, they're clearly declining. What is your decision and how are you moving forward with this patient? I'm looking at Greg. I'm, look, I'm looking <laughs> at Emily. I'm looking at Emily. I was going to have a follow-up question, but. I'm tough with going with. Oh, no, no. Let's all look at Ariel. <laughs> Boom. No. <laughs> okay. I think we're all thinking, like, do we go with the norepi at this point? No. The guy has a dialysis. That's, no. Yeah, I'm like, no. So I guess my question is, like, what is his holdup with giving fluids? Is he, he's not giving fluids. He's not. So he's, he so hung right the bat now and didn't start it. Oh, I didn't. He, okay, yeah, no, yeah. wide open. Just, so you know, yes, no, so, I can right? see his concern with the what was the protocol? Uh, two liters and then two started. liters. Yeah. Then Nora. I get it, but why aren't we doing any fluids? And, uh, yeah, right. I missed that part. Why aren't you totally. even trying to see if like you get any type of response from the fluid? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like start the fluids. The hospital can fix the fluid problem. Like that's not like I don't know. I mean, you're not wrong. This is this is why I think this this call is so interesting because there are all of these little like onion layers. Like, all of us would have sat there and been like, "Hey, let's start some fluid." Yeah. Okay, he's a dialysis patient. Maybe that makes him worse, or maybe he's worse because he's tagged. You know, who right. knows, right? Maybe they took too much off. But maybe he I was didn't just go. Say, maybe like, whatever. Oh, you can't give fluids to dialysis patient because they can't get rid of it. Like, but they get rid of it three times a week. Yeah. Right. Dialysis. Yeah, right. Three going times to a, a week. Hospital. And if they're if they're say they've missed dialysis or whatever, they're going to get dialysis in the hospital. Regardless. Yeah. Regardless. So if you give them too much fluid, they're just going to take it off anyway. Right. Right? right? I mean, I'm not wrong in saying no, that's 100%. that. What is, gonna, what right? is going to kill him faster? <laughs> right. His blood pressure tanking or fluid to help his blood pressure? Now, now, so we kind of look at that from experienced eyes, but where, like, put yourself in the shoes of oh, you're three weeks out of class and on your own, how does that affect your thinking in this type of situation? Because that's where this medic is. Like, one month out of school and on your own – I remember that being really scary yeah, times. Because you're like, I want to do everything I can. If I miss something, I'm in trouble. Or, R- right. You know. Or if I do it wrong, wrong, like I fucked up my protocol and I, you know, yeah. like where is, does that come into the mix in the experience level and maybe the apprehension to pull that trigger? You know, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it does. What's your thoughts, Gerard? No, I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. I mean, like, yeah, uh, the, I think the only thing that you would have going for you as being brand spanking new would be just all the shit's fresh in your head. But beyond that, there's no experience to apply it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So there's no confidence. Yeah, and, and again, like you say, there's nothing to compare it to. We haven't seen this patient before, right? There's right. There's nothing for you to go – Oh, hey, I've seen five of these before. This is what I did. They they did really well. There's a lot of book knowledge. There's a lot of skill knowledge, but there's no application on real patients. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, which again could be the holdup, you know? Yeah. Is there kind of the rock in a hard place of I really want to do something, but I'm also freaked out and I don't want to do it. It's, you know? it's like us intubating mannequins 200 times. You know, we, we'll hit it every time. But once we get on that real patient with the real stress, everything's a little bit different. Right. You know? Right. So going forward, the medic chooses to begin the infusion, finally, of the saline bag that they had already hung. Okay. Now, they also take the opportunity to mix a levofed drip. Um, they mix four milligrams of levo into a 100 ml bag. And then spike the 100 ml bag of normal saline with a 60 drop set. Now, they do their med calcs, and they calculate that their drip would be about three drips per minute to achieve, uh, to achieve two mics per minute. That's three mls per hour. It's a different calculation. I don't know why they did it on a 100 bag. Yeah. Maybe their brain math works differently. I know in our area, they mix it with a thousand. But once you put that four milligrams into a thousand bag, that's when you change it to micrograms. If they're putting it into a hundred bag, it's not converting it from milligrams to To micrograms. micrograms. So now we're running at 
a wicked high dose of norepinephrine in a low concentration bag. So I, Which is I, again why I think they're giving so few drops. Yeah, with the right? sixty-seven. Like they're yeah. right, they're giving three drops, drops over the course of one minute. So they knew that's one drip every twenty seconds. seconds. Right. Yeah. Like that's in a sixty-drop set. Right. So, so, so our math is different. So the math is different. But figuring it out, the math works. Yeah. All right, so. It's just a different way of calculating it. All right, that's fair. Not so, this is way too much med math. Like, I had to write this down and figure it out and then figure it out again. And I was like, this is way too much math for me. But maybe their brain so, works like so this. So this is no, – I, don't, I, don't, I think this is what we just talked about. This is fresh out of school. All that shit's right in their fucking brain. Right. You and I try to do this today, and we're just going to go uh, – Fuck it, give me a thousand big. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Right? <laughs> we don't mat that way. Yeah. You know? So the uh, the medic mixes this whole drip, but they, they hold the Levo at this point in time. They mix it, and they put it aside. And their goal is to allow the normal saline to infuse until they see a change or they reach cell service to get further advice from med control. That's their hope. So... Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're mm -hmm. pre-planning. They're pre-planning. They're hoping that maybe the fluid perks this guy up, and they don't even need the levo. Maybe they can make it a half hour until they get cell service. I mean, I also prime your pumps. Like I would not yeah. hang the levo right away, right. so I right. would let that normal saline go in. I mean, yeah. I, I have gotten orders from a doctor on scene where I have less than five hundred milliliters, and he's like, "Push levo." Right. And so there, there's doctors that will give it to you. Less well, than in the hospital. You don't do a whole two liter bolus like that's crazy so, to me, especially on a dialysis patient. We would yeah. never do that, but like two fifty, and if their pressure hasn't changed, then, then you hang leave a fit. Yeah, like but you need to put something in the pipes, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't question: see, How, yeah, how is he? The, they closed it earlier. Yeah. I missed that part. Go ahead. How is he administering the, the fluid? Is it wide open or is it kind of half no, cocked? No. KBO. From from what I've gathered, it's wide open on a ten drip set. Okay. Right. Good. Um, so we're going to, we're going to fast forward just a hair. And now the full liter normal saline bag has been completely infused. So he's gotten a thousand MLs. Okay. Vital signs are reassessed at this point. Blood pressure is 67 over 39, a map of 48 heart rate of 134, still sinus tack with multifocal PVCs. Respiratory rate is 22, still shallow. 97% SpO2 still on the two liters. There is no change in how he is presenting or in his mental status. Yeah. He just continues to stare off into space with no response to this EMS team. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a, he's not perfusing his brain. Yeah. I, I, I feel like VTAC's coming soon if we keep getting these multiple. We multiple haven't focus. gotten a 12 lead yet? No. No. Would Girl. you like one? Yeah. Denied. Denied. <laughs> BLS. <laughs> Sorry. <Right. laughs> uh, they, they don't get one. It's a D9. I, I mean, I, I got, I'm reading what I'm reading. There's no 12 lead. Here. I mean, I would, I would hang the levofed. I mean, you're a thousand mLs in. Yeah. Why I would not? hang the levofed. With no change. I agree. With, with no that. change. With no change. I agree right. But you're that. still treating symptoms. Like we haven't figured anything else out yet. Right. right. There's so no we don't cause. have a temperature. Like, how does the fistula look? Is this infection? Is this neuro? Is this cardiac? Right. Is his potassium through the roof? Like, like there's still so many tools that right. you could use to try and eliminate and things eliminate these things. Out. Right. Mm -hmm. We just sat there while the leader bag was going in and stared at the drips. Who knows? Like, I wasn't there. Keep yeah, especially moving. if we can start rolling out hyper K too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, right. Be, I mean, be, again, like I said, that'd be the first thing I'd roll these out. These are going to cause a hyper. -K. These are all things that should be being done. While you're sitting there waiting right. for a thousand bag, right? Good. I think I put him on end title. Did they put him on end title? They didn't tell me no. No. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the medic goes and attempts to contact med control again, both via cell phone and radio without any success. Still no cell service, and they, uh, again, can't pick up the frequency from the hospital on the radio. So due to this, the medic decides they're going to go ahead after the 1,000 mLs of saline and begin the infusion of the norepi. And they begin at a dose of two mics per minute, and their plan is to reassess in about five or six minutes and see where their progress is. So I'm assuming that you guys are good with this, 
right? Start the Levo, even though their protocol says two liters, I'm thinking this is probably a good decision, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I probably would have gone more of the hospital route to 50, 500, 500 and, and you know what? I, I got nothing from med control. I'm just going to do it and ask permission later. Yeah. Uh, it's Man. not Never forgiveness. Don't ask for permission. Right. I mean, it's not going to, it's only going to benefit the guy yeah. and I'm still going to give him the thousand and then I'm going to hang another one while right. I'm giving Levo, you know? Um, so I did ask this medic if they, if this system, um, had other pressers to choose from and they only were given nor epi. So that's also something like, Hey, could we attack it from a different angle? Maybe start an epi drip or something like that. They didn't have those options. I don't yeah. think I would have gone with epi. I mean, I wouldn't have gone epi either just because of what the heart's doing at yeah. this point in time. But again, yeah. a lot of people, they have norepi, they have epi, and those are the two ways they attack it. There are no other options. Now, you get to where, like, my wife works, and they have, like, five different pressers. I still think you know? that levofed would have been the presser of choice for this, though. I agree. I agree. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just throwing that in there because I asked. I was like, was there another option? Okay? So... Five minutes of, uh, of infusion goes by, and like they said they were going to do, they reevaluate blood pressure. So BP is found to be 73 over 51. That's a map of 58. Okay, so we're increasing there. <clears throat> Heart rate is 128, still sinus tack, with multifocal PVCs, but now less of them, more infrequent. Uh, respiratory rate came down to 20, still shallow, uh, SPO2 98% on the oxygen. He still will not answer EMS, still continuing to stare off into space, blinking here and there. However, he's now moving his head slowly, looking back, like, back and forth around the back of the ambulance, something in which he was not doing earlier. So medic sees this and goes, okay, we might be moving in the right direction. I'm going to increase the leave of fed to four mics per minute. And they let a few more minutes go by, and the medic now is deciding whether or not to increase the Levo again. And they're like, okay, we're going to get another set of vital signs. And they hit the thing, and out of the middle of fucking nowhere, this patient yells out, Trump. <laughs> out of the middle of fucking nowhere. So the medic's like, what? And looks at the guy. <laughs> The medic looks at the guy and is like, um, what? And he's the fuck. Right. He's That's staring at him. You asked him earlier. Right. He's staring at the guy and the guy's now moving his head, actively looking around the back of the truck. So he goes, what the, what the hell did you just say? And the patient responds again, this time right away and says, Trump, you asked who the president yeah, was. He's answering the question. That's crazy. Yep. So, the medic looks down at now, you know, because they hit the, the vital signs, the, you know, redone vital signs, and blood pressure now is 80 over 58, MAPA 65 even. Oh, look, he's perfusing his veins. He's perfusing his veins, wow. wow. right? That's what, that's what it's yeah. amazing. How that happens. Um, heart so they rate, didn't just pull that number out of their ass. They did not just pull that number out of their butt. Um, heart rate of 118, so we're progressively going down. Right, still sinus tack with few, um, fewer even still multifocal PVCs. Uh, respiratory is 18, no longer shallow, still 97% on the two liters. So the man begins to attempt to ask the medic, like, why am I here? What is going on? And the medic informs him that his son had believed he was acting strangely and not like himself. This is why the ambulance was called. And they told him that he was more of like more or less unresponsive the entire time until they called out Trump. So he's now like reevaluated and found to be fully conscious, alert, oriented times four. He's able to answer all questions with ease. And he reports to the medic that um, after, you know, further questioning about what's been going on the past week or so, uh, he says that his vehicle had stopped working 
and his family went out of town. And he hasn't gone to dialysis. So he was unable to go to his weekly dialysis appointments. So we're assuming oh. it's now Sunday. He hasn't gone since the previous Friday, right. right? Now, as this conversation is happening, the rig approaches the hospital. The medic does decrease the Levo back to two mics per minute. And they go in, they unload the guy, they turn him over to the receiving staff without issue. So he had a potassium at 12. I don't know. <laughs> I, I totally did not ask for anything. My phone is blowing yeah. up. Um, so how did the, before I get into asking you a very specific question, M, because you are the lead uh, specialist on this at the table. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, is that true? I agree. Um, We've got a badass. Yes. Over I don't here. know. I'll tell you the answer. I no, don't know. You do know. Um, how did this call go overall? Not bad. Not bad, right? I think there was a couple timid moments. I think there was a experience gap, but I don't. And again, you um, said it, it was all about treating the symptoms. And I think that's what overall they did. And they got lucky in that yeah. ultimately they found out what the cause was. Right. So I ask you specifically because you have um, experience with dialysis with dialysis patient, what exactly happens when you miss dialysis, like for that amount of time, and kind of what you may encounter with those dialysis patients. So it depends because people, you know, obviously your kidneys have a ton of functions. So are you on dialysis and you're one of the people that you miss one dialysis and you are fluid backed up? But all that's telling me is that fluid's not in the right spot. So now your legs are puffy, your belly's puffy. He had a distended belly. Like yep. that doesn't surprise me. That was my first indicator. He did not go to dialysis. Yep. Um, but... Everyone's like, oh, they're already fluid overload. We're not going to do it. But the fluid is not in the right spot. So unless right. your fluid is in the vessels where it can give you a blood pressure to perfuse your brain, it does not help me. Yeah. Yeah, so, it doesn't help being in your legs or right. your belly or it's wherever. It's not helping me at all. So I'm still going to give fluids. Yeah. I'm still going to do that. Um, but you also have to think of all the waste buildup that your kidneys get rid of every day, like you and I. So, you know, you also have potassium building up. You have all this nasty shit. That needs to get out. That's right. all going to cause altered mental status. Yeah. And I think that's where the cardiac arrhythmias were coming from. Yeah, I'm right? sure. I, I would have loved to seen end title solely because it was probably elevated, probably. right? Because he's probably acidotic at right. that point in time. Um, mm -hmm. So are you typically, and again, I think this, this probably your answer is going to be, it depends on the patient, but do you see more hypertensive or hypotensive patients when you miss dialysis for that amount of time? Actually, ironically, you see more hypertensive. Yeah? Yeah. So is that because of the fluid overload or is that like, why is that? Because your kidneys are dead. Yeah. And they, and they do, and you know. They do regulate blood they pressure. They regulate so, your blood pressure. I mean, interestingly enough, like I would love to see what his med list was. Like, you know, he missed dialysis, but he clearly wasn't altered that whole time because he remembers his car broke down. He didn't go to dialysis. Right. So like, is he still taking his blood pressure meds? Because that might cause some of the hypotension. If he still has the medication floating, yeah. it's going to stay in your system longer because your kidneys aren't getting rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And who knows when he was altered either. Right. right. He could right. have been altered an hour before the, the son found or him. Or four and days ago. Or right. four days ago. Who fucking knows? Taken medications multiple right. Times. He could have taken it twice. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Right. I think it's that, like one of the big things, and I think you and I, now that I'm doing series on dialysis, I think you and I need to partner up and do a CME on dialysis do because it. I don't think enough providers understand the complexities of of kidneys. a dialysis patient yeah. and what the kidneys actually do. Well, it's crazy because everyone's like, oh, kidneys make urine. And you're like, no, they're so, so much, so much more. Right. Yeah. And just, you know, all of the different pieces to go into just making right. urine. Right. I mean, yeah. it, it it's crazy. And I think, again, not enough people know, yeah. uh, you know, the ins and outs that they could. You know, I think we have a very limited knowledge about dialysis and we go, oh, okay, we, we have those misnomers of, oh, they're on dialysis, they're fluid overloaded. Don't give them any fluid. Right. Like, don't give them any fluid. 
you know, and right, I like think, X plus Y equals Z. Right, yeah. and but I you think know that's, what? I'm glad that yeah. this provider, being new, was like, "Oh, I'm not going to hang fluids because of dialysis," and then worked his way through it. Because this yes. is what I was going to say when you're like, "Oh, he's new," and I was like, "But our job as seasoned providers now is to train somebody not to have all the answers, but to figure it out." Yes, use your resources and figure it out. And he did. It took him a minute, but like he figured it out. Right. Yeah, and I don't. I don't fault this medic for no. doing anything that they did. I, I think it was solid. I think there was a time period where they could have done a little bit more assessment stuff. Right. Temperature. Is this sepsis? 12 lead. Right. You know, I, am I looking at hyper K or, you know, all of these other type of cardiac arrhythmia, you know, causes, you know, we said temperature, we said end title, you know, all of these things that could have been done that were maybe overlooked because stress. Right. Hey, this might have been their first completely unresponsive dude that's right. not coming around. Right. That's stressful. Yeah. I remember that day. It's not mm -hmm. fun, you know. Um, so you know, I, I kind of want to dive into your guys' opinions on the the no med control thing, right? So, if this was your guys, do you you know, you you make every attempt, but at times you kind of have to just do what's best for your patient. I don't feel like this this medic did anything wrong in the fact that, like, they tried twice, right? They tried two different ways. Then they waited. They tried two different more ways and still couldn't get anything. Um, I've never been in a, in a place where I've not been able to contact med control at some point or another. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Um, but it happens. And I think we have to be like, okay, well, you know what? We tried. There's still a patient dying in front of me. I need to do something. And I think a lot you of know? the times when you guys call med control, you already know what you want. You already know what's going on. And you're you're kind of using them as like a confirmation. And just to be like, okay, well, I don't know everything. So like maybe they see it differently and yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. But you, they come back and say something and you're like, yeah, that's what I thought. Hang up. Right. So like trust yourself. Treat your patient. Yep. You're ne well, I shouldn't say this, but you're not going to get in trouble for doing the best you can for your patient. You shouldn't just try to justify your actions. Right. You should even then, but yeah. you know, you shouldn't get in trouble for doing the best for your patient, whether you have med control or not. Like you, you're not maliciously this doing is, something yeah. to hurt them. That's what we're trained for. Exactly. Right. Use your brain. Especially if you have med control. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the, uh, too soon. I'm, so. I'm just, I'm just, put, just putting it out there. So with, with the discussion about MAP, right, MAP or mean arterial uh, pressure, if you're not using MAP calculations, you probably should start. Yeah, I do all the time. Right. For that. Yeah. I got to tell you, I don't even give a fuck what their blood pressure is. Just give me a MAP. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Those numbers mean nothing to me. I want the MAP. Exactly. That's it. So, and yeah, that's usually what I like, usually what I do if, you know, when I'm given either a radio report uh, or, you know, bedside report, um, yeah, if it's somebody that, that I'm treating that has, you know, that has been hypotensive with me the whole way, yeah, I'm giving them the BP, and I'm going to say what the map is. Yeah. So I they, tell you how many they have in the all the information. And they'll be like, oh, you know, they're hypotensive, and, like, I don't care what the blood pressure is. You can give it. I don't care. I'm like, what's the map? And they're like, we don't have that. Yes, you do. Well, because they don't know where to find it. Uh, but that's the thing. They don't know their equipment. They don't know right. all the resources that they have. Yeah, and that's and that's the one thing. So, like, BLS providers that are not utilizing, um, you know, cardiac monitors and such, there's a formula for that. Mm -hmm. And it's right? really easy. And it really is it's easy. It's no Parkland formula. Don't it, worry. No, it is definitely not. So, I, I have it here. So, systolic plus two times the diastolic divided by three. Super easy. You could figure that out on the calculator on your phone, Right. Or if you are using a cardiac monitor, there's just so happens to be a map calculation built into your cardiac monitor. That's why they cost $35,000. I swear it's solely because of map. Uh, <laughs> it's not for any other fucking it's function. It's so worth it. It's solely for <laughs> map alone. Um, and if you don't know where that number is, it's usually by the blood pressure and it says map. Yeah, or, or it's in parentheses. Right. So right, on different, right, on different <laughs> monitors, it is directly underneath your blood pressure. It's the little midget number, mm -hmm. either in parentheses or it says map. Um, little, little number, please. Little number, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that, it auto-calculates your map for you. 
So it spits out, you know, 80 over blah, blah, blah. It'll say 60, 65. Cool. Okay. I should see a normal mentating patient unless there's other reasons as to why. Maybe there is a UTI. Maybe there's an infection somewhere, blah, blah, blah. But when we're thinking about MAP, we look at it as a far better indicator than just systolic pressure alone, right? So we always go, oh, 120 over 80. We want, you know, a systolic over 100 for good tissue perfusion, you know, and that's just not true, right? right? So when you're looking at a MAP, that MAP is calculating much more than just tissue and organ perfusion. It's calculating flow of blood through arteries. It's calculating resistance that they encounter within the artery. And then ultimately what the pressure is like within those arteries caused by secondary sources, right? Whereas systolic pressure is only calculating the initial squeeze of that heart muscle. So there's a whole lot more that you could sit there and be like, okay, if it's calculating all of these things and it's really bad, like map of 50, map of 45, you know that their cardiac output is garbage. Shit, right. It's garbage through and through. So normal map is anywhere from like 70 to 110. 65 is that happy magic number where they say your noodle is getting perfused, right? Anything below 60 is considered low and a cause for hypoperfusion of tissues and organs. Whereas anything like above 110 indicates that there is above average pressure within the arteries. So again, there, there could be cause for blood clot, uncontrolled hypertension, kidney failure, heart failure, all of that you might see a higher map, right? So there's a lot of information, and that's why I think we should be seeing a change from, oh, hey, that blood pressure is really good, or maybe it's not really good to, well, what's the map? I don't care what that number but, is. And you brought it up too, like we all pay attention to the systolic because that's what we were taught. But like yeah. the map actually accounts way more for the diastolic. Damn skippy it does. And that's why. So you can have a blood pressure of 120 on two and your map's still going to be shit yeah. because your diastolic is shit. Right. Yeah. And think about, again, what that diastolic reading right. is. Right. Right. When we calculate our blood pressure curves, your systolic is only your squeeze pressure, right? right? Your diastolic is your Rest. resting, pressure, right. relaxing pressure. So right. MAP is really adjusting the flow within the arteries, I guess the resistance on itself. Yes. Right. As opposed to how much squeeze is actually happening. Right. Correct. Yeah. So and, for all the, and for all the people like me who need things broken down real simple, like when I explain this in classes, I tell them, it's, you know, especially for the people who understand, you know, engines and stuff like that. I said, it's diastolic is the pressure that's in the lines when the pump isn't pumping. Simple as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the simplest terms, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I think they're, you know, I'm definitely going to push MAP in my BLS classes. And I think, you know, more attention should be paid to it in the ALS classes. I don't know, honestly, if they are or not. But, you know, again, BLS could calculate this in two seconds, you know, LifeNet, my wife, whatever, they have to calculate in their head. Mm -hmm. Boom. Done. I couldn't do that. I'm not a mathematician. I'd write it down, put it in my phone. But still, it's easy. Right. We you should even, be utilizing the this. thing is, too, is like if you're doing it in your head, I am not a math person, which makes me nervous because I just applied to that. Um, but like you can look at the diastolic and be like that map's not good. Yeah, exactly. I don't know the exact number, but it's not good. Right. So, um, again, I just wanted to touch the, the last thing I wanted to touch base on was just pressures. Pressure. Man, I <laughs> suck today. Uh, pressors. Uh, in this instance, norepi was used, right? Norepinephrine functions as a peripheral vasoconstrictor uh, by acting solely on those alpha adrenergic receptors. I don't know how I got that I one don't out know either. instead of pressors. <laughs> that was barely. Right. I, I felt yeah. it. I felt it faltering <laughs> at the end. The wall yeah. was crumbling. Um, but it is also a, uh, an inotropic stimulator of the heart and the diet. Uh, see, I was going to say dietary. 
I literally was about to say dietary instead of dilator of the coronary arteries. So uh, because it, it also acts on, on some of the beta uh, receptors, it does get a little bit more forceful contraction and squeeze on that heart muscle. And that's what that inotropic uh, function stimulator does. So norepi, again, is a really good... Mm-hmm. Um, use in this, it squeezes your pipes, it gives your heart a little bit more squeeze, it helps that map from both ends, you know? So I think, again, this was this was their only choice, but it also was the best option in the... In the There's also a reason that, you know, because our area is the similar, we really only have Levofed. Right, one option. Right, so, but there's a reason that that is the only option for us, because it is a good choice. Yeah. Like yeah. it's number one for it's your te- your pressure of choice I should say for septic shock, um, you know cardiogenic shock not not the choice but it's gonna help until they can get there and then switch to something else. Right, right. Yeah, I think overall, like I said, I think everything went really well mm-hmm. here. Um, do you guys have any last thoughts, Gerard? Any last thoughts? No, no, no not really. I'm good. He's good. He's good. He's flying his flight simulator. Yeah, now. right. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not yet. Uh, so, guys. No, t- not yet. <laughs> Till next time, <laughs> stay safe out there. Donuts. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you'd like more information on the podcast or to send us a call to review, visit medicmaterials.com forward slash podcast. To learn more information, like us on Facebook at Medic Materials EDU or watch our weekly instructional videos on the Medic Materials YouTube channel.